Hey everyone, it is Thursday night and tonight we're going to be talking with Johnny and yeah, it's been a busy week. I have a project in the works that you're going to be seeing uh, come out on Saturday that I've been working on with another um, 17 awesome ladies. Sorry, I'm just inviting John in. Uh, Okay, I'm back. I just invited Johnny in. Uh, yeah, so there's another 17 ladies and I working on this uh, this chick fight video. So it'll be coming out on Saturday, so make sure to keep an eye out for that because it's going to be really fun. How's everyone doing tonight? Hey, Johnny, I see you. Hi. How goes it? <laughs> Hello. Long time. <laughs> uh, I know. How have you been? Good. Busy. I've been working on a chick fight with 17 other girls that's coming out on Saturday. Working on what? What's that? A virtual chick fight. Okay. So like a, like a fight scene done virtually? Yeah. Yeah. With ladies. yeah. So it's going to come out Saturday. Just I'm waiting on two more. Hmm. Yeah, you've been busy. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. You had Working, um, enough works. I have what? You, I thought you were writing another short film. I'm all, at this point now, I'm always writing. I'm always <laughs> writing something, whether it's a short film or a skit or a commercial. I'm always writing something at this point with all the everything being shut down with the pandemic, it's always good just to, just to keep the mind busy at the very least, so. For sure. Yeah. Um, John, your connection sucks. My connection sucks? Is it your oh. connection or is it my connection? I think mine's at full bars. Oh, cause like I look fine on my end. Is it cutting out for anyone else? I don't know, not, it's not cutting out for me. Hmm. I don't know, cause yeah. it's, you're not cutting out for me. No, so you're not cutting out. You're not cutting out for me either. Oh well, we'll continue, and I guess if it's if it's an issue, we can always restart it. Cool. Uh, so, do you want to give everyone a background who doesn't know you? Um, what you've been up to? A crash course on who <laughs> I am. So, well, my name is Johnny. Every I, my name is John, but everyone knows me as Johnny. I don't think I consider myself much of a John. Um, <laughs> I'm 37 years old. I've been in Toronto for about the past four years now. And I moved here really to A, to be closer to my son, B, to be in a bigger city, and C, obviously to focus on my acting career, to really take it seriously. Yeah. Um, and kind of make a serious go of it because you never want to be that person, you know, who's in their 50s, 60s, 70s, who are just going to be, oh, what if, what if I had done this? What if I had tried? And it got to the point in my, I guess, my late 20s, early 30s, where I was like, if I'm going to do this, I have to, I have to at least try. So yeah. I decided, you know, a whole bunch of things kind of came together and I picked up and I moved to Toronto and mm -hmm. I've been taking it very seriously ever since, um, whether it be little commercials or TV shows or movies, I've been trying to do it all, trying to keep busy. And in this span of whatever, three and a half years, I've gone from a non-union nothing. I'm in the union now. I have a lot of nice big auditions, some parts I can sink my teeth into, and I'm constantly learning. Every time I'm on a set, I'm learning, and that's the most important thing for me at this point in my career, and I only want to get better and smarter and move forward. So That's awesome. Mm -hmm. You were on The Boys recently. I did. We shot that. I think that was shot back in 2000. 19 but yeah so season two of the boys i got to be i got to be in an episode i got to do a fight scene with with butcher so he's played by carl urban if you folks are not familiar with the show carl's been around fuck for 30 years he's you know he was he's been in the star trek movies he was in the immortals he's done hollywood he's been in hollywood forever and he was absolutely the sweetest sweetest guy just the nicest most humble down-to-earth guy yeah. and I was really nervous I mean it was my first I guess real big set that I've been on 
Yeah. And him and I, because we had that scene together, we were kind of, we had the same makeup room and we had the same driver and all that kind of stuff. And it was a really good learning experience. And he made me feel super at ease. It was just the nicest, sweetest dude. Talk, love talking about his kids, talking about fishing, talking about being back home in New Zealand. And it was, yeah. it was a lot of fun. It was a great experience on the set. Obviously, it was a lot of fun to to be in, you know, working on something that big and something that serious. But it was really nice to see that even some of the big guys are really down to earth and humble. It was really reassuring. So yeah, that's amazing. I saw, you know, like, that's so cool. Yeah. yeah. I wish it wasn't just like, I wish they'd show more of it though, right? But you know, so as as an actor yourself, you know that so much is filmed. Yeah. And then a ton of it is left on the cutting room floor. Okay. So yeah, there was a lot more done. There was a lot okay. more shot with that scene, but for whatever reason, that's the sub they selected, so. Uh, I get it, because I've been doing that all week to other people's scenes, been like. Yeah. Dropping. Nope, get rid of that. <laughs> yeah, not going to work, not going to fit. We run all the time. <laughs> Commercial break. It's the thing with fight scenes, right? You have to cut it at the right point to make it sell on the other end. Well, yeah, and when you're switching angles, if a punch doesn't line up or yes. something is off even just a little bit, that, that can throw off the momentum of the scene, so you got to cut it. Exactly. Well, that's mm -hmm. cool. So for those of you who don't know, Johnny and I work together on the Vampire TV series that's coming out this October. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the Chronicles of the Blood. If anybody hasn't seen the trailer, it's, uh, well, one of the trailers is up in my stories right now. Yeah. You can find both trailers on my profile or Johnny's profile. Um, yeah. And also, I think on, on YouTube as well, um, yeah. 11 Entertainment Studios. Yeah. Um, the so, L's in 11 are ones, so it's E11, 11 Entertainment. If you can't find it, it's because you're probably using the L's as L's when they're supposed to be ones. Um, but that that was a lot of fun. I'm really excited for that to come out because we worked really hard on that. And being that it was such like a guerrilla production yeah. and Alan being the type of cinematographer that he is, it was like, go, 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 go. And whether it was plus 15 out or minus 20 like we're wearing foam armor and next to nothing costumes it was it was a learning experience it was so much fun too so i'm really excited for that to come out and see how it turned out oh i remember the the very cold days <laughs> it was always the coldest days where we had to do fight scenes in the snow that's what it always seemed to be. It was the coldest days that we ended up on our backs in the snow. And it was... I distinctly remember that you had fur, though, and I had bare arms. <laughs> bare. Yeah. <laughs> I at least got to wear, like, as the king, I got to wear a little bit more than the queen did. But... Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't fair. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you have a short film that you wrote, produced, and directed, correct? I wrote and produced it. It was, I was going to direct it as well, but seeing as it was my, it was my first real project that was kind of my baby, I was more than happy to hand the reins off in terms of production um, to a gentleman by the name of Merce, Mercenary, and um, I was more than thrilled with what he was able to do with it. Him and I actually met, um, which is another reason I love bartending so much, is because the network you get to build, especially in the city of Toronto, where you never know who's going to be sitting down in your restaurant. And he was sitting across from me and I was working at a bar one night and we just started talking about film. And it turns out that he had shot a whole bunch of music videos and he was, you know, he knows his colors and he knows how to color things very well. Think of like a Christopher Nolan kind of deal. And I watched his reel and it turned out really good. And I had been working on a script for a couple of guys that I also met in a bar one is a South African guy and one is an Irish guy. So you can just hear like the nice accents, the brogues. So I was like, oh my God, I got to write these guys something. Yeah. So I wrote a short film around then. And then I so happened to meet Merce. So everything kind of came together. Yeah. Um, and that was so much fun. We are literally at the tail, tail end of it. Um, it was such a process of trial and error because it was Merce's first time shooting like actual short film, he'd done a lot of music videos. So it was a learning process for him. And it was my first thing that something I'd really written mm. came from, you know, the cutting room floor 
or uh, sorry, the ideas all the way to the cutting room floor. So that was a lot to take in and adapt and kind of work with and a couple of younger actors. And it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of really, really hard work. You yeah. wouldn't think that a short film that's only about 12 minutes mm -hmm. would be that much work. Yeah. But you're, you're a filmmaker. You've been doing it for years. You know, it's just like, okay, cool. Like, it can't be that hard. It's only a five minute short. And then things happen and then things get rolling and it's it's a lot of work but it was a lot of fun and it's um the short film's called butterfly mm -hmm. and it's um it's essentially an interrogation gone wrong yeah. so to kind of not give anything away and just to give you something it's a couple of couple of dirty cops interrogating mm -hmm. a guy but there's something not quite right about him so that should be Sorry, that was my dog. That should be ready in the next couple of weeks. Then we're going to screen our um, our final cut because we had a first cut. Then we have our final cut. And then we're going to be sending it off to a ton of festivals all yeah. over the world. That's so, amazing. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. That's awesome. Yeah. So congrats. I am so proud of you. And Thank you. Thank you. You haven't seen the trailer yet. You should seriously check it out. I, I Yeah. The trailer is on, I think you posted it. It's also on my um, on my Instagram wall as well. Yeah, so I shared the post from your Instagram because it didn't like me when I just reposted it, so. Yeah, it's because the audio is, um, yeah. is a famous uh, classical piano piece, so it gets dinged by Instagram all over the world. So you can find it, and that's not gonna be in the final movie. We have all original music. We yeah. had um, a DJ duo called the Disc Walkers. They did, um, yeah. They had a song that was out, and one of the uh, one of the actors slash producers in the movie, he's a he connected with them and reached out. So we have the rights to their music for the film, and it's a really really cool song. So it's a lot of moving parts that end up coming together, and I can't wait for everyone to see it. I'm really proud of it. So awesome! So that yeah. a few weeks you said right for everyone to check out. A few weeks tops, most likely a couple of weeks, but I want to see a few weeks tops. It'll be ready. So. Damn. Okay, I promise, guys, I'm not ignoring you. I see comments popping up. Um, when Johnny jumps in the water, Johnny doesn't get wet. The water gets Johnny. <laughs> uh, nice tarp tank season. He is amazing. Hi, Jimbo. Great mindset to have. I don't know what that was referring to because it was so far back. But mm -hmm. um, There was a few more. Jen, what other programs have you appeared in? Um, a bunch. I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> Jen, your eyes are amazing, and Johnny, stay beautiful. Well, thanks, guys. Um, I have been in The Chronicles of Blood. I will be in I, Terrorist. I just finished filming and stunt coordinating The Taste of Blood, mm -hmm. uh, which has been picked up for a worldwide distribution deal with um, Hollywood Suite and another thing. They're hopefully doing a red carpet premiere of that in October. COVID, COVID permitting, COVID permitting, COVID yeah. permitting, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the Cry of Silence, I'll be in the, the like, horror thriller. Uh, it's filming hopefully in August. Again, COVID pending. Everything is COVID pending. Yeah. Six productions lined up for this year. They're all COVID pending. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's the nature of the beast right now. That's with yeah. so many indus um, industries, right? It's, everything is, is COVID pending or COVID dependent. But yeah. it like, is what it is. You've been doing it for a long time, though, Jen. You, I know that you've been... You yeah, know, acting and writing and and you've been you've been doing this for years yeah over a decade right i'd say um technically yeah i was more in the um the reality tv section mm -hmm. I, the past four years i've switched over to fictional so mm -hmm. yeah but then i did a lot of like musicals and stuff throughout school so yeah yeah so yeah. did you start off were you a theater kid i wouldn't necessarily call it theater but yeah i did musicals right so <laughs> Oliver Twist, um, Wizard of Oz, like those types of musicals. And then I was in like ladies choir, concert band, uh, concert choir all through like uh, high school. We did musicals in high school. We toured um, part of Canada and the United States with those musical groups. Um, yeah, that, that was my, my main focus actually in school was to become a doctor and that sort of changed. <laughs> That's going from being a doctor to an actor is, <laughs> a leap that not many make. Ken Jong did it. Ken Jong did yeah. do it, but not got, many would make that leap. Yeah, I got back into TV through my cake business because they yeah. were doing teaching segments on Rogers TV. Um, and then when the daytime show that I was on ended, 
uh, the producer knew that I had liked doing this stuff and said I should try it for a show, and that was Alan's. So uh, she had it's, the, it's very small industry. It's I think that's one thing we can both agree on. The longer that you're in it, the smaller you realize it is, right? It's we're going to be running into the same people that we've met through various projects, whether they be other actors, other writers, producers, casting directors, camera operators. It's a, a, a something that a lot of people don't understand is that this industry is extremely small. Even in a city as big as Toronto, you know, with whatever, just shy of 4 million people, mm -hmm. um, the industry is very, very small. As an actor, um, you know, there is, let's say there's powerhouse casting, there's Jigsaw, there's um, Louis K. Like there's only, let's say, six or seven bigger casting agencies in Toronto and they only have a certain amount of employees. So you're gonna see the same people reading for you and the same people holding, the operating the camera equipment and stuff mm -hmm. and feeding you your lines. So yeah. it's really important to have a good reputation and kind of leave a good taste in everyone's mouth, no matter if you're auditioning for uh, a CIBC commercial or for a Michael Bay film. Like you, you know, compose yourself, be professional, but be memorable. It's important to be memorable because just because you're not going to get a role on something, yeah. if you're in somebody's mind for a project moving forward, it's good to be, you know, it's good to be on the tip of their tongue, so to speak. Yeah, for sure. I am. Um... Yeah, the, the, I did a training this year that has really helped with uh, audition nerves because the technique they use in class gets you to stop overthinking. Uh, okay. Literally just coming up with a hook. So you're, you're leading in with an emotion. So like if um, you're angry, what was the sentence you'd say before your original sentence? And that's your hook to lead you into the emotion to get you into the Interesting. Scene. Yeah. It's with uh, Joseph Perlman. Um, okay. For, I mean really good if you haven't checked him out he does offer a free audit um highly recommend checking out the master class on thursday night like i was mm -hmm. pumped up ready to go at like three o'clock in the morning yeah yeah that's definitely something that um as an actor i need to be doing more this year especially is taking more classes whether it be a simple like a free sit-in audit yeah or paying for a new stunt course or paying for like yeah like a bowmander seminar or something like that just all the best actors they always say that it's 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 a matter of constantly learning yeah. and bettering um mm -hmm. and progressing you know mm -hmm. it's so important it's it's you see so many actors yeah especially the big ones um let's take steve martin for an for for example you know i mean yeah He's got other hobbies and other passions. It just kind of shows you how serious he is. Yeah. So a lot of these actors and these big performers will pick up hobbies mm -hmm. that they may have learned for a film, and it ends up being something that they completely become obsessed with or really, really good at. Yeah. And then those skills are transferable to later on in life, whether it be for a role or whether it be for just something to keep their, their sanity going. Like yeah. how many actors you know that are also musicians? Yeah. Or that are also uh, painters or yeah. illustrators or and a lot of them obviously are writers and directors. Yeah. It's it just shows that it's, you know, never stop. Don't stop learning. You know, whether you're 20 or 50 or 80, like there's always more to learn. Yeah. And we have a, a massive advantage in the, the profession that we have chosen hmm. to get paid to learn, essentially. So. Exactly. I've been. I, I feel like I've taken more classes than I should have last year. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that's such a th such a thing as for for an actor or for an, any artist. You know, take as many classes as you can. Just because you're not going to use something doesn't mean it's not good to have it, right? But um, yeah, and then I the, all the Audible books and the Kindle books that I um, downloaded, thinking that yeah, of course I can get all these that are still sitting in my to read or to. Oh, they're they're backing up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's biting off more than you can chew. That's fine. That happens. Like, oh, yeah, I, I should read that book. It's still sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get to it. It's right. not going to expire. It's not going anywhere. No, it, it's already been, yeah, paid for and downloaded. Yeah. yeah. But I have time, you know, because I just... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we've all got a lot of time right now. Uh, you had a bunch of questions come in. Um, I'm going to start popping them up. Uh, have you ever really disliked someone you had to work with on set? How did you get on? Have I ever really disliked someone that I had to work with on set? Really disliked someone? No. 
Um, this is actually an interesting question because I think this is something that people also don't realize about um, this industry is that it is a lot like any other job. You're not going to like every one of your coworkers. Yeah. It, does, it doesn't happen. It's, it's impossible for everyone to like everybody. It's just human nature. Um, and there are situations and instances on set where you may not get along with somebody, whether it be another actor or whether it be someone from the crew. Now, I think that it's extremely important to always handle things professionally, whether you're on a non-union set or whether you're on a big, you know, big budget union production. Sure. Like we said earlier, the industry is so small yeah. that your reputation will follow you mm -hmm. and eventually it will precede you. So if you've got a reputation, you know, even as talented as you could be, if you're difficult to work with, People are going to know about that. They're going to hear about that. And then automatically there's going to be some hesitation or a minor stain, let's say, on um, on who you are before you even walk on set. And you don't want that. So, yeah, I've dealt with people I didn't necessarily really enjoy working with. But yeah. always maintain an air of professionalism because yeah. at the end of the day, that's that's, you know, your best resume or your best selling point is yourself. So carry yourself, handle your own shit yeah. and be as professional as possible. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. You really hated me. <laughs> yeah, I hated, yeah, I hated the actress playing my wife on a show that we shot tons of scenes together. That's really good acting, so. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm kidding, he didn't hate me. <laughs> uh, okay, what other questions? Uh, I feel like this one is um, from your buddy. Probably. That What's what's the question? Can you not see it? Do you urinate in the shower? <laughs> yeah, I'd say yeah. Saves on water. <laughs> oh God! And have you urinated on someone in the shower? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, is your driftwood art available on Angry Goat? No, not yet. Um, I've taken a break from the podcast, which will be becoming the angry goat as well as the website just for a bit, because I've been so, I guess, stir crazy. So I've been writing so much. So I've been doing very little on the website as of late, as well as the podcast, um, stuff like that. Yeah. As I have, mm -hmm. you know, as I hate to say it, but as I have more time, yeah. um, as I have more free time to be able to dedicate to that kind of stuff, I will. But mm -hmm. as for right now, unfortunately not. Yeah. How do you find it doing a podcast? I've stopped. Um, I finished the second season yes. um, and I've taken a break. I'm going to start the third season back up when I can have um, in-person interviews. I much prefer, for my podcast anyways, I much prefer to have my guests sitting on the couch face to face. Like I'm really, mm. I'm very responsive to people's, to people's energy when they're with me much more. So not to say that things like this don't work. That's great. But for myself and for my show, I really like to have the person sitting beside me so we can really engage and yeah. kind of feed off each other's energy. So, but I, as for how do I love doing a podcast? I love doing a podcast. <laughs> yeah, they they can be a lot of work. So they're really, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like maintenance. It's just once getting the ball rolling. Yeah, isn't that hard? It's just keeping the momentum going. Like every week, having new content and new guests, and not being you know not doing too much recycling or too much repeating. Yeah, it's important to keep things fresh and uh, fresh and new. Yeah, I basically started turning all the coffee chats into audio files and putting them on Spotify. So. Yeah, just exactly. It's re repackage, repackage, repackage. Exactly. Uh, this one's from Angel. Uh, what has been your favorite role thus far? And what would be your dream role for the future? That's a very good question. My favorites. My favorite role thus far probably would have to be Neshton on Martyrs, just because I love being a big brute, like just a big, a big dominant aggressive brute. It's a lot of fun. I got to war, wear war paint and armor and lots of cool fight scenes and stuff like that. Like that's really what I brand myself as is kind of the Viking, the warrior, the big guy. Um, yeah. Dream role is definitely a Marvel or a DC villain. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, the heroes are great, but the bad guys have so much more fun. Right? 
Uh, the like, I mean, uh, my favorite character in the Marvel Universe is probably Loki. It's and it's just because it's so good to be bad, and I just would love, I would love to play a Marvel villain. Absolutely. Have Have you been checking out the new TV series that they've been putting out? Uh, the Cab, the Falcon, and the Sol the Winter Soldier. Uh, yeah, that, it's it's been pretty good. And then Loki's coming out in June. May or June, yeah. I'll I'll definitely be watching that. I have Disney yeah. Plus. I'm all over that stuff. So for sure, oh, for sure. That's gonna be a good like. That's gonna be an interesting pair. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's funny because it started not even a decade ago when a lot of the big celebrities like Spacey or like Cheadle uh, mm -hmm. went to do TV. Yeah. You know, because streaming was blowing up and stuff like that. So a lot more A-listers were switching from the big screen to the small screen. So I think it's great. There are shows that I'm still discovering yeah. that have some fantastic A-list Hollywood talent mm -hmm. that are on Crave and Prime and Netflix. And I mean, um, I just just started watching Fargo. Okay. And, and um, Fargo's got Ewan McGregor. Yeah. I had no idea. And stuff like that. And there's shows like Yellowstone that I just discovered uh, with Kevin Costner and stuff like that. So yeah. I'm loving the fact that more big celebrities are going to be doing small screen stuff. It's great. You know, a, a movie's an hour and a half, let's say, maybe two hours. And a lot of these shows mm -hmm. are either a half an hour or an hour long episodes, and we get yeah. seasons of them. So if you're a fan of a particular actor or their work, you just yeah. get to see more of them. So it's great. Yeah. The, there's two great um, Apple TV TV shows that are like Apple Originals. Uh, okay. It was really good. I don't know if you ever watched that one. Which one? Defending Jacob. I haven't. I, it's on my queue. I haven't watched it yet. Really good. Um, and then the other one with Jennifer Aniston. I forget the name of it. It's based in an office, though. Um, it's with Reese Witherspoon and Jennifer Aniston. It's an Apple original. I'd have to look up. Oh, yeah. I can I can see it in my head. I can't remember the name of it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. It won a bunch of awards. Um, okay. Do you, uh, do you train for medieval fights? And what's your favorite weapon? <laughs> we did. I mean, I've, I've done a lot of stage combat training. I did that a lot in theater. And I've always loved hand-to-hand um, -hand combat. Not so much, you know, standard boxing or mixed martial arts, but swords and shields and a lot of medieval stuff. I grew up, like, as a, as a, a lore nerd, right? I love uh, fantasy. I love wizards and dragons and all that kind of stuff. So um, the training that we did, we had, I believe his name was Steven. Um, he was a gentleman who was helping us on the set of Martyrs because he worked at Medieval Times. So he did a lot of sword and shield hand-to-hand -hand combat. Yeah. Um, my favorite weapon, probably, if I had to pick, would be something like a throwing axe. Yeah. I think that was, that we got to work with, obviously, with prop throwing axes and stuff like that on the show, but stuff like that, I think that's, that's really badass. That's very, very Viking, very lumberjack, very warrior, so that's yeah. probably my favorite. Yeah, I can't wait till it comes out so I can blow some of the behind the scenes, because I'm like, there's like so many, like, there's so many funny things that happen through. We we could have, we could have a whole season of yeah. behind the scenes and outtakes and bloopers because there was so much stuff just to keep our, keep warm and keep our wits about us. Just yeah. a lot of goofing off and stuff. So yeah, I'm sure there's going to be tons of stuff for yeah. behind the scenes. Or make Jen tall enough beside Johnny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. There weren't. There was non-union. There was no apple boxes on set, so <laughs> we had to make do. When was the last time you had short hair? Was it by choice or for work? The last time that I had short hair, the last time I had a haircut was, I think, in 2014. Mm. That was the last time that I had short, short, short hair. Um, it started off that I just was like, I, eh, let's see how long I can grow it until I'm sick of it. Yeah. And it got to the point where... I was able to tie it back. And I thought that was going to be it. I was like, okay, I can tie it back. It's not annoying me anymore. I can, I made it this far. I can cut it whenever I want. And then I just decided to let it grow longer and then longer and then longer. I've cut it a couple of times to donate. Like I've cut like the 10 inches and stuff like that. Um, I think I've done that twice, 
but short hair, I don't know, unless I'm paid very well for a role, yeah. I don't see myself ever going back to short hair. I like I, I like the way that the, the long hair looks on me. I think it suits me better this way, so. Yeah, there's a, yeah, the, my hair keeps coming up in productions too, because I have a widow's peak. Yeah. So what keeps happening is they keep giving me wigs and the widow's peak comes down below the wig. And somebody's like, well, what if we paid you enough to shave it off? I'm like, you can't pay me enough to shave. Yeah, well, that's. But that's yeah. a fair amount of hair that's going to be. And that's a long time to grow your hair back. It's a yeah. long time. Like, we're not 18 anymore. We're not yeah. spewing hair out of everywhere. We've got to keep what we have left, right? <laughs> so. yeah. It gives me a unique hairline. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's your niche, your niche. Yeah. Um, when will your script be ready for aging young rebel? That's, that's probably, oh, that's Richard. So, um, Richard and I worked together on, uh, a documentary. I think it's, no, it wasn't even a documentary. It was like a historic, one of those historical reenactment videos, um, or films anyways, we worked together and he's a fantastic cinematographer. So, um, he's one of the, um, one of the guys who we're going to be doing a short film together. Nice. So I'm trying to pump out interesting scripts and stories as quickly as possible while, yeah. you know, having room and time to do everything else. So I've got three or four projects on the go. Don't worry, Rich, it's coming soon, buddy. I promise it's coming soon. Uh, search the land documentary. Yeah. He, he recommends me a lot of really, really good um, videos and films to watch to really get uh, really obscure and noir and very, uh, very technically focused films. Not just like, oh, it was entertaining. Well, no, it'll actually watch it. You'll learn some things, so. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. okay. I know there is, there's one more question that was actually in the box. Uh, what's your favorite drink? And I mean booze. Oh, and- Tequila, tequila. Tequila? Absolutely. Yeah, Johnny's a bartender for those mm -hmm. of you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. A good tequila is like, is like a scotch. There are so many notes and it's, everyone's got that horrible story about tequila, but that's usually because they got drunk off of it in college or high school and it was really bad tequila, like a Cuervo or something like that. It's, oh, I hate tequila. It's like, well, no, it's, you hate bad tequila. So yeah. you get them on this whole spiel and you try and educate and yeah. Yeah, tequila is absolutely by far my favorite, my favorite drink. Yeah, I have one of those bad tequila stories too. Mm, we my, all do. <laughs> my doctor recommended when I had a sore throat that I should um, take like a drink of something, maybe like kill the bacteria. And I decided to go to the bar that night. I don't know if you know my friend Leanne. Um, there's like sometimes pop up. Anyway, mm. so I got a tequila sunrise at the bar. Okay. And then I got another. <laughs> and, then I got another <laughs> and then I got another. <laughs> and then... Uh, by the time I got home, I think I was like six tequilas in. And this is like me 40 pounds lighter. Like I'm like 110 pounds at this point. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I uh, had a job interview the next day. I was literally over in bed and puking into the bucket. Mm. I had a job interview. I got the job and then went home and puked again. <laughs> that's, that's, that's obviously one of those horrible stories. Because if you're drinking like a cocktail, anything that's a cocktail with a tequila, especially a sugary cocktail like a tequila sunrise, there's no way that any self respecting bar yeah. or bar owner is going to be putting any quality tequila in that drink. So you got like, the rail, the crappiest of the crap, then orange juice, so a whole bunch of ton of sugar and then grenadine, so even more sugar. So you essentially yeah. like you're drinking a headache that is pre-diabetic essentially yeah. so and you had like four four five six of them so that is the last that's, yeah that's that's you know i'm happy you got the job but that was your own damn fault so it, it was but yeah that was the last time i drank tequila because now i can't even get near the smell of it like this mm. smell that memory and i swear like, bad tequila has a horrible smell good tequila smells like scotch when you when everything is open up and one of the bars i'm working at you come out and i will introduce you to good tequila, tequila. that's what i do Okay. Yeah, I promise. Um, to, oh, Leanne's here. She's like, hi, I'm here. I'm not a bad influence, I swear. Yeah, okay, Leanne, whatever you say. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> uh, ha, classy. Yeah, it wasn't my best moment, but I was like 24 at that point. We all, we all do it. I probably did that when I was 34, so. Uh, Angel says she loves tequila. Uh, delicious. I tripped getting up into a dance. Oops. Um, 
Angel likes the blue and white bottle. That's Claus Azul. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There we go. It's like, that's like the Grey Goose of tequila. Everyone knows it. Everyone loves it. It's, yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty good tequila. Yeah. I don't drink a lot anymore because they took my gallbladder, so. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. Well, I, I can. It's just, I, then I pay for it for the next three to four Yeah, it doesn't sound, the, the trade-off, especially, it's also something when you get in your 30s. Yeah. The 48-hour, uh, 72-hour hangover, when you yeah. start weighing things out, or yeah. especially if you're a parent. Yeah. Like, it's like, I cannot be mm. non-functional for 48 yeah. hours. Like, I have a household to run. So, <laughs> yeah. like, and I've only got one kid, and you've got, what do you have, seven now? Five, there you go. Yeah, like, might as well be. Who's counting after three, right? Exactly. Yeah. Wild. So you have five kids and you have a hangover? No thanks. Not attending that party. Yeah, see, my, the, basically, I didn't have any of the pre-existing conditions that usually cause you to get gallstones, except for the fact that I had those pregnancies. Oh, yeah, yeah. Created stones. And they're like, we don't just remove the stones anymore. We just take the whole organ. And yeah. 20% end up with issues still. Hi. <laughs> That's, that does not sound like a party I want to attend. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I, I will drink. I just don't do it often because I don't like the repercussions. Anyways. <laughs> um, a good tequila is amazing. I've seen it being made. I love Jumbo. Uh, yummy tequila sunrise are delicious. They are until you've had six. <laughs> yeah. But they're always great. It's always great that night. It's the next morning that you have to worry about. Or later on in the night, depending on how many you have. I thought that we already we already answered that one, right? Is What's your, that? Is your driftwood art available on Angry Goat? It popped up as a new question, but I thought... No, we no, already... it's... Yeah, yeah. Not yet. Okay. Patience. Patience. Yeah. Oh, maybe we answered it and he wasn't on and he asked it. Maybe. Yet. Could have been. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions for Johnny? Because I've gotten all through the ones that were in the box. Quick. We don't mess around. Yeah, do it now. We don't, uh, we're, bu we're busy people. We got, we got stuff to do. No, no, take your time, kids. Um, <laughs> What's coming up? Okay, so you have Butterfly coming up in three weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, if you're just joining us, the Martyrs Chronicles of the Blood is coming out in October, which is the Vampire TV series. Um, I Terrorist is being finished shot this year, hopefully, and you were in the First two episodes, I believe, of that. First, I Terrorist, it was, I was, yeah, in two episodes, yeah. Okay. And then, um, what else? You, the Boys is already aired. Yeah, that's already aired. That's on uh, Amazon Prime right now. If for anyone who hasn't seen it, it's, I'm specifically in season two, episode five. Yeah. You can't miss it. You'll know when you see it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have Martyrs coming up in October. I've got a whole bunch of a whole bunch of projects in pre-production and you know finalizing things. Um, I'm going to be doing another short film with an actress by the name of Max Millar. I'll tag her later on. We're doing um, a short film about an aging boxer oh, cool. and his wife and stuff. So there's there's lots of stuff coming up on the horizon. And just like you know, as an actor, you know you could have four or five, six things in post-production. Yeah. That might be out in three months. They might be out in two years. It depends. You know, it's just because you don't see something on television doesn't mean that we're not working. There's so much, and I'm still learning all of it. There's yeah. so much that we don't realize that, mm -hmm. um, you know, that we have to do. It's not just, okay, it's film, put it on screen. It's like, no, no, no. There's so much before and so much after. Yeah, the, the Chronicles of the Blood is three years in the making now. So. Yeah, well, the the gentleman making it, Alan Sonier, he's writing, directing, producing, editing, yeah. um, soundscaping, uh, orchestra, like uh, everything is this one man uh, operation in his like bat cave of a basement. So the stuff that he's put out before in the past and some of the stuff that he's shown us from him working on this, it looks so cool. Like, it looks so, so good. If you're a fan of vampires or Vikings or ancient folklore and magic and all that kind of stuff, this is definitely for you. It's, it's like Lord of the Rings meets True Blood. It's super, super, super cool. So I'm really, really excited for that to come out. We all worked so hard on it. It was a great chance for us to, to hone our acting skills and learn as we went. I mean, it was, like I said, it was very guerrilla style. So it was like, like you rehearse a couple of times, 
<laughs> run the scene a couple of times, go, 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 go. And it was like, it forces you to be quick on your feet, you know, think or swim. You got yeah. to get it done. Yeah. And it's, uh, there are some amazing shots. You can see um, Alan's got a bunch posted on the 11, I can't talk, the 11 Entertainment page on Instagram. I'll mm -hmm. take videos um, mm -hmm. uploaded. And uh, he started a new page just for the series, uh, Martyrs underscore the Chronicles of the Blood. So mm -hmm. if you want to see like, some screen caps of the upcoming stuff, you can check them out there. Like, incredible, incredible shots. Yeah. Uh, and Angel, who's in the chat, I don't know if she's still here. Um, she plays one of the characters in there as well. Yeah. No, yeah. Michael Haskins sometimes pops in. He's one of the leads in that. Yep, he is as well. There's we had a lot. There's a lot of actors um, that I still keep in touch with working on that project. And yeah. moving forward, I'll be working on more projects with. So, yeah. like, hopefully, we'll work together again someday. That'd be fantastic. You went union on me, so <laughs> I'm niche. I had to. <laughs> he divorced me without even. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not getting any auditions for Pringles ads with all these tattoos and this hair. I don't fit. I don't fit the bill for a commercial. They need me in. The, they need me in Hollywood. So yeah, it's fine. I will just have to figure out something for season two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, can't wait to see it. Plus, Jimbo looks great in blue. What I do. I look great in blue. All that blue body paint. What happened to whose eyebrow? Whose eyebrows messed up? That's that's my buddy Paul. I, I I shave a slit in my eyebrow now because I think it's cool. So he loves to he loves to make fun of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I hope that nothing's wrong with my eyebrows. <laughs> no, yours look yours look fantastic. Don't worry. Mine are butchered. Yours look fantastic. What happened? Did I overpluck? <laughs> no, you look great. Uh, is there an actor you'd really like to work with? Sorry, that might have been asked already. No, don't say sorry. Hmm. Wow, that's I get asked this question a lot, and it's. There are so many different actors I would love to work with. It would really just have to depend on the on the project that we're doing. I think that are, there are some actors who I am more impressed by mm -hmm. their talent um, than I am by their entertainment value, let's say. Um, to work with, if I could ever get the chance to work with like a Meryl Streep okay. or, a, or a Tom Hanks, I yeah. would just I would just think that if even if I got to do one day on set with someone of that caliber, yeah. the amount of knowledge I would absorb from mm -hmm. one day on set with someone of that magnitude would be yeah. a life like it would be essentially like sitting in on a master class and have everything just shoved down your throat. Like when I worked with Carl, yeah. the biggest thing that I noticed with uh, with with an A-list celebrity is that Everything is all fun and games. Everything's normal when you're rehearsing and setting things up and going to your marks. And then as soon as you hear mm -hmm. like set before action, you could see in his eyes mm -hmm. the change, like when the character gets turned on. Yeah. And it's, you hear about it when, you know, how can you cry on command? Yeah. Or like, how do you get into character? And when you get to a certain level and reach a certain caliber, and a lot of it has to do with confidence, seeing somebody just literally in front of your eyes transform into the character that they're playing is mm. just so goddamn impressive yeah. that I would love to to be around more actors of that caliber. So That's amazing. Yeah. I I don't know. Like I always say like Krista Miller, Chris Evans, but that's just because they're two of my favorite actors because I like their personalities. So. Yeah. See, and I mean, that's, and that's fine. That would be me saying something like Leo. Like, I mean, he's one of my favorites because I love the personalities. But yeah. in terms of like learning or like having a crash course, like imagine being on set with like Christopher Watts. Yeah. Like just, yeah. you would absorb talent through osmosis. Like you would just be soaking in and basking in his talent. It'd be incredible. Yeah, Samuel L. Jackson would be like another incredible person to learn. Yeah, he'd yeah. be great because I mean he just plays himself. You'd just be hanging out with Samuel and shooting with Samuel. It'd be so much fun. Ryan Reynolds, like seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's super so super talented and super personable. Yeah, <laughs> love Chris Evans. We yeah. all love Chris Evans. I love Chris Evans. <laughs> uh, great answer. Okay, any other questions for Johnny? You've been like, it's just been like the Spanish Inquisition for you tonight. I'm, I'm used to being on camera. So are you? I'm used to being on camera. I'm used to being interviewed or grilled, so to speak. So I'm not usually being grilled though. Like I'm um, usually doing the questions. You're doing the grilling. Well, you've been a fantastic moderator. So lovely. I'm just here to ask you questions. You run a tight ship. I can tell you have five kids. Right. Oh God. Yeah. Okay. It, there, it's actually like I like 
setting because they're more relaxed. And I didn't want to do like a super structured talk show when I came up. Yeah. I wanted it to be like two people like just talking to each other. Like you're in like a coffee shop or a bar. Just yep. yeah. No, it's it's a great, uh, great formula. It was yeah. very easy. This is month three of cats. Mm -hmm. So Michael K. Haskins, the poor guy was like my one night where my, my little guy was having a rough night. <laughs> yeah. Uh, poor Mike. Yeah, I bet he took it. I bet he took it all very well, though. Okay, fine, but I just felt so bad because Tyler started freaking out just as I asked Mike what his best advice to his younger self was. I'm like, so not the right time. For <laughs> Cut. Right. Fix it in post. Oh, wait, we can't. It's live. Never mind. Famous last words. Fix yeah. It. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, nobody else is popping up, but I know there's a delay. Okay. So to recap, Johnny has a short film that's coming out. If you're just joining us uh, in three weeks, the next couple of weeks, next couple of weeks, she'll be ready. Yeah. So check out that trailer on his profile. In the meantime, um, if you need an easier way to get to it, it is posted in my stories. You can just click on the post and go right to it over on his profile. Uh, also make sure to check out the trailers for the Chronicles of Blood because we work really hard on it. It's so good. Yeah. It's going to be so good. Yeah. Even uh, if it even if it bombs, it was so much fun. But it won't bomb because we all know about how much crap is on streaming services right now. And this show is actually really done well. So I'm very excited for this to come out. Like, like it's the detail in the like, you, you just have to see it. Watch the trailer, you'll see what we're talking Especially, about. Especially I mean, we got we have the advantage of being on set and working on it, right? So we know, like, there's a few shots in the trailer where you see this massive cliff. Yeah. And it's like, we were there. Like, that wasn't there. That yeah. wasn't there. Like, the cliff was 20 feet high, but Alan managed to make it 60 yeah. feet high with fog and green yeah. mist and a never-ending chasm. And it was just like, we were there. Like, that's that's in, like, the Hamilton escarpment. Like, it's not 300 feet high, but he managed to make it look fantastic. So, yeah. And just to be proud that it was shot local, like that's that's another thing to be proud of, right? Yep, very <laughs> local. Like planes overhead, having to scrap shots, wait and redo them. Like yeah, it was extremely local. Or Trucks and planes and engines, and we were in the vineyards and backyards <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> there was yeah. a big we were filming in that had these. It was like end of season, and they were protecting their grapes from the birds and like. What was it like every couple of minutes? It yeah, was it was they were blast charges. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was in the vineyard, and it was. Yeah. yeah, it was like dynamite. It was like dynamite going off every three or five minutes or something. It was like hurry up and get your take in, and then all of a sudden, bang. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Always in the middle of a really good one too. <laughs> it's okay. We'll fix it in post. Yeah. Uh, question that popped up for you: uh, How did you come to realize you wanted to be an actor? I think that. I subconsciously knew very, very young that I wanted to be an entertainer. Um, I was always very um, excited to make somebody laugh. That was my big thing was if I can get people to laugh. I learned at a very young age the mm -hmm. the power of humor yeah. and the the attention that you can get from entertaining people. So I was very much the class clown. Now, I was also a very good student mm -hmm. up until the age of about 16. Mm -hmm. um, and after the age of 16, I put much less focus on my grades and much more focus on entertaining and making people laugh, which my fellow students loved, but my teachers didn't necessarily love. <laughs> but um, when I got to be 18, 19 is when, I, is when I started bartending. We had a family pub, so I started bartending. And seeing the kind of energy and the kind of attention that you get when you're bartending, like you run the show and you, you know, you're not just making people drinks, you're making them a night and you're, you know, they yeah. have to come to you for drinks, so they have to pay attention to you. So you, you know, you kind of control the situation, you have all that power. So the bartending was something I was always attracted to. And it was never the, the money or the drinking or the girls. It was the fact that I had a stage. And then as I got older and you know, my mid twenties and late twenties, I was realized like, I no, I should really be focusing on the acting thing because it's not, the bartending's not doing it. It's providing me with a stage, but like, I want to entertain thousands. I don't want to entertain dozens and hundreds. Like I've, 
you know, I could, I do movies for free if I, you know, if it, if it kept the roof over my head. Um, but I just want to entertain people. So I knew at a very, very young age, let's say six, that I was meant to entertain people. Um, in terms of me taking my acting very seriously, it wasn't up until a few years ago. I'd done plays and stuff yeah. and made silly videos when I was younger and in high school and stuff, but did I ever take it extremely seriously? Not until a few years ago. And when I got on my first set, it was a very long day. I think it was like 18 hours on a set. It was a non-union commercial production. And I remember getting off of that set and I was more energized and in a much better mood mm -hmm. than being behind a bar for four hours. Yeah, for sure. Right? I made $150 and I had to stand there for mm -hmm. 18 hours. But yes. I was so in love with the experience that I knew that it was like, no, no, like acting is where I'm meant to be on sets. I'm absolutely meant to be on sets. So I knew that I'd made the right choice. Yeah, that's, that's how I feel too. But I, like, I don't feel like I ever go to work when I'm on set. No, like, even the worst days. They're not always great days. They're not. <laughs> like there were even a couple of times we were shooting martyrs. We were tired or we were cold or we were like, we just want to finish. But even those bad days on set, I wouldn't trade them for the world. Like there, it's it's what we're meant to do. It's when you know that you found your passion, and not everyone is as lucky as us to be able to find what they know for sure they yes. want to do for the rest of their lives. Yeah. And I mean, I think you'll agree. Like I want to do this for the rest of my life until the day that I can't function anymore. I would like to be acting and entertaining. Absolutely. Yeah. Like Betty White. Mm hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, what a gangster. God, she, God love Betty White. She's amazing. Have you seen the birthday video with her in San Francisco with Ryan Reynolds? I like everything with Betty White. I mean, even when she, like, she had a cameo yeah. on Lake Placid years ago. And yeah. this little 80-year-old something woman was like, if I had a dick, this is where I'd tell you to suck it. And I was like, this is Betty White saying this in a, yeah. in a, in a horror movie. This is hilarious. So very self-aware and having fun. And that's what you would like to do that's what i would like to do it's just having fun you're getting paid to have fun yeah. like what a better career like yeah. name a better career than that it's fantastic well some days i get paid to fall down a lot of times <laughs> exactly when we're doing stunts yeah you get paid to be in a lot of pain but yeah like you know, i wouldn't trade it for anything yeah i was coordinating stunts for the, the film that we just shot uh with a cool and the i was i was going through the stunt over and over again where i was showing the one actor how to fall down mm -hmm. the next day my left side was so bloody sore Just covered in bruises yeah exactly yeah. my glutes were like hate you i hate you because mm -hmm. <laughs> it was it was a one-legged like sink down the wall yeah yeah, yeah but and you do it over and yeah. over and over yeah. and over yeah and over and over and over and over and over yeah over. yeah until they're ready for camera and then you do it for camera but I yeah was, i was just showing other people how to do it so then i would yeah. They came in and did it. So yeah, um, I mean, I've been falling down through free for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want to ask you what I ask everybody. I was sure. Like, best advice to your younger self. Dave. Okay. Save your money. Okay. <laughs> Cause it's <laughs> it, like, it's save just save your money. It's so, don't buy stupid shit. Okay. And it's so hard. Because, I mean, I work, I still work in bars, obviously, because I'm not famous yet. Um, so I work with a lot of kids in their, in their 20s. Mm -hmm. And you see them doing the same stuff that you were doing and blowing their money. You make mm -hmm. 400 bucks one night, then you go out the next night and spend 350 And I, all I can do is I can just sit there and I just, oh, I did. If I had saved 10% of what I made and blew when I was, when I was young. Yeah. I'd have a, I'd have at least at least one house at least one house so just save be smarter with your money yeah like that's that would be like my serious piece of advice if it's regarding my career um, it would it would have been don't care what other people think just just take your own path yeah for years I mean I still struggle I mean believe it or not I still struggle with self confidence and self esteem I mean it happens nobody's perfect we're our own worst critics right. Um, but I've managed in the last few years to really let go of the fact that you're not going to please everybody and, you know, not everything you touch is going to turn to gold. 
in this industry, we get 99 no's before we get a yes. Rejection is a massive part of this industry. Right. And, you know, that's a, that's a massive part of life in general. So the sooner that you accept that and, you know, the sooner that you start believing in yourself, yeah. whether you want to be an architect or an actor or a pilot or an Uber driver, it doesn't matter what you want to do. To, the sooner you gain that self-confidence and the sooner you find kind of your voice and your passion, the better and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Yeah, for sure. That's great advice. And yeah, it's it's a hard thing to learn, but once, it really is. And once you grasp that concept though, like people judge. They're gonna mm. judge no matter what. So you might as well go do what you wanna do and be happy. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. saw really I've seen this pop up a few times over the years and I've heard it and seen it in many different um mm. avenues, but um your biggest fan is someone you don't even know. And the person who wanted you to fail the like fail the most is someone in your closest circle. And it's just, you never know who you're touching or inspiring because, yeah. you know, as hard as you are on yourself, especially in, in this industry, I hated that take or that was such a stupid commercial or I didn't like doing that. There's somebody watching that and saying, oh, I wish I could do that. Or I yeah. wish I had that confidence. So you don't know who you're touching. Exactly. So, you having the confidence to be yourself and doing what you want to do may mm -hmm. help somebody else watching you, mm -hmm. you know, and wanting to be where you are, even if you're not where you want to be at that point, you know, you always want more and you want to improve. There could yeah. be someone watching you who wants what you have. So set an example. Yeah, exactly. No, I came across that too, even with like Instagram posting, because for so long, I was like so self-conscious about like posting this or that. I'm like, am I posting the right thing? Am yeah. I enough people and then I just started just like posting what I wanted to post and then I started getting comments like thank you so much for saying that like I needed to hear that today and this and that like oh, okay that's this mm -hmm. is okay gotcha it's weird it's like being genuine yeah. should be the most natural thing in the world but we're all just so concerned about you know who's watching or who's gonna like this or who's gonna think this is stupid the sooner you can let go of that the happier you're gonna be yeah and the people that don't like it aren't your people very true. Very, very true. That's yeah. something that for everyone who's younger than we are, you know, don't worry about having a massive circle. I always say I'd rather have four quarters than a hundred pennies. Yeah. Yeah. Small I circle, small circle of the real people. You know, you, you learn very quickly who they are. Yeah. And um, when you have um, a group of people around you that you know, you can rely on for emotional support and, you can, you know, share your everything with like the stronger person you become, the better person you become and the better influence you are on everyone around you. Yeah. And the, the more you can help other people get to the same point. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Everyone's fighting a battle. You have yeah. no idea. So yeah. be kind. Be, be kind, people. <laughs> be kind or I'll call you out on it. This is our PSA. Be kind or we're coming after you. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, we're not allowed to stay home. <laughs> okay, um, I've kept Johnny for an hour. I, I think we should recap and then let Johnny go back to his evening. I'm doing laundry. <laughs> doing laundry, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> the laundry monster, fun. Mm -hmm, exactly. Uh, okay, so productions. Check out the Chronicles of the Blood. I have a feeling it's gonna do really well. The one uh, trailer on YouTube has already 11,000 mm -hmm. views. Over over eleven thousand views, so mm -hmm. definitely check definitely check out Johnny's episode of The Voice. Do you remember what episode it was? Season two, episode five. Watch the whole show. I'm not just saying it's a great show because yeah. I did an episode. It's a great show because if you like superheroes and violence and fantastic writing, the show is so so good. So watch season one. Watch all of season two. Yeah. I'm specifically <laughs> in season two, episode five. Okay. Season two. You can't miss me. You won't miss me. Trust me, you'll know. So just that's my answer. Okay, so Chronicles of the Blood, uh, season two, episode five of The Boys, and then Johnny's short film. Check out the trailer on his Butterfly. Show. Yeah, Butterfly. Uh, if you need a quick way to get to it, it's tagged in my stories the post. Just click on it, it'll take you right over. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have another short film in the works that nobody knows about yet. Three. Okay, Johnny has That's so much going on. <laughs> Johnny's got a lot. Keep an eye on IMDb. That actually, that's a great thing to say. You can go to IMDb. Uh, mm -hmm. If you don't have an account yet, it's free. Sign up, and you can follow Johnny, and you'll get notifications when new things come up for him. Follow all my escapades. 
Yes, exactly. Or follow him on Instagram and he'll just post about them. So. <laughs> okay, I think that's it, right? Was there anything else that you wanted to direct people to? I think that was, I think that was it. You got to speak about everything that I, that I wanted to. This was lovely. Thank you for having me. No problem. Oh, I terrorist. Um, but it's only finishing filming this year. But it'll eventually be out in his Yeah. That is, yeah, let Alan do one thing at a time. Alan, if you're watching this, just focus on, focus on Martyrs. Finish that first. We can wait. We can yeah. wait. Focus on Martyrs. All right. But the trailer that's out has you in it for a terrorist. Does it? I, don't, I haven't even yeah. seen the trailer for it. Yeah, it's on his uh, YouTube page. Oh, amazing. There we go. Then go check that out because I'm about to as well. So, so 11 Entertainment, E-1-1. One, one, one. One. Yeah, E-V-E-N. So mm -hmm. switch the L's out for once. Okay, uh, nice talk later, guys. This was cool. Thanks. No problem. Thanks for joining us. And yeah, thank you, everyone, for joining in. This was a lot of fun to, to do a little little Q&A. Uh, it was so good to see you. talk talk. Yeah, we haven't talked since, like, everything ended. Well, we've yeah, talked. It's, it's been a while, yeah. yeah. We haven't physically spoken in virtual reality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have a good night, Johnny. You too. Thank you so much. Bye.